Nate, the great Mark Bart. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely anytime. So let's go, kind of go to the beginning here. Your MMA debut was in 1999. If you could have told young Nate Marquardt at that point about all the successes you would have in mixed martial arts, about the heights you would reach, the championship fights you would have, what, ex what exactly do you think uh, your reaction would be? Uh, I mean, I, I guess I kind of always have pictured myself, you know, being successful. And so I don't know if I would be surprised. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard, a hard question to, to answer because, um, should I, should I be surprised maybe, or maybe not? I don't know. Like sometimes when I look at my career, I'm, I'm like, I see the success, but other times I see the failures. So it's, you know, it's, <laughs> What failures are you uh, talking about? Oh, just, well, like, uh, you know, I never got the UFC title. Uh, I had a couple chances and came really close, but didn't get it. So for sure that. Well, when I look at your uh, career, the picture that instantly is painted in my mind is the Tyron Woodley victory uh, in Strike Force, <laughs> that what captured you the Strike Force title. Uh, yeah, I was watching. I'll be honest with you. So Tyron Woodley's a St. Louis and I'm a St. Louis. And so I was rooting for him. I'd had my little kid oh, nice. book signing at his gym. And then when you knocked him out, I'm like, Jesus. But like, that's one of the instant memories I have of your career. You've of course been many shared the cage with many legends. What's the most memorable moment for you? Or what are some of the most memorable moments? Uh, yeah, definitely. It was, that was one of them was, uh, beating Tyron Woodley, you know, he was undefeated at that point and it was for a world title. So that was, that was a big deal. Uh, maybe one of the more memorable ones was uh, the first time I won the Pancrase belt. Uh, you know, I was young, young guy, 20 years old. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys were a lot more experienced than I was. And I had been training in Japan for four months, you know, away from, my culture, my family, my friends. So, uh, and I was super sick when I won, when I won the belt. So that was definitely a big one. Oh, what a badass! What were you sick with? Uh, I don't know. Some kind of, I, I was sick for three months. It was similar to mono, but it wasn't mono, but it was really bad. And still taking that championship. What a badass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've definitely, you know, I, I just had that kind of, never quit attitude. Uh, but definitely I had a, you know, a lot of blessing, a lot of, a lot of favor from the Lord. And I, that's where, that's where I really attribute all my success to is God. Now, let me ask you, uh, it's kind of a funny question, but you know, I always typically get good answers from it. Did you have any bizarre moments, uh, in the cage at like any malfunctions, any just absolutely bizarre situations that kind of like looking back now, make you laugh a little bit? Uh, you know, one thing that comes to mind is when I fought Chell Son and uh, I was trying to to sh to shrimp out, and I realized he had his hand underneath and he was grabbing the the top of my shorts, and uh, and I just kind of was thinking, oh, like, oh, that's pretty clever because there's no way for the ref to see that. <laughs> and so, you know, he's uh, he was, he was good at that. <laughs> now, for you. Uh Again, I, I consider you to be a legend, a pioneer of the sport of mixed martial arts. Uh, is there anything, and obviously an old school fighter who has definitely been able to transition into the newer side of things, but um, is there anything from the old school MMA when you initially started around those times that you wish would kind of be carried over into this new school of MMA that we see? Um, well, I mean... I would say, yeah, but it's not that it was, I guess more just the, the mindset or, or the, you know, the, uh, the virtue of humility, <laughs> it, you don't really see, I mean, you do see it, but it's, it's rare. Uh, you see it in guys like, like Benil Dariush. Uh, he's, he's very humble and, and, uh, super skilled top of the world, but, uh, you know what you see now is more like guys trying to pretend they're in pro wrestling and 
Oh, of course, they're trying to make a name for themselves. Uh, and, and some of them do it. Like, obviously, you have somebody like Conor McGregor. So everyone looks at that and sees his success. And they want to follow after that. And I think that's uh, not good. It's not good for the sport. It's not good for uh, the fans. Uh, it's, it's just not, it's not, um, you know, pride is, is not a virtue. It's, it's, it's a sin. It's a, it's against, uh, what's good. So yeah, you have the virtues uh, of, you know, humility, honor, respect, things like that. And I think as a martial art, mixed martial arts has kind of gotten away from it. It's become more of entertainment, which I think it's entertaining, uh, apart from making it like a spectacle, like pro wrestling. Mm. I gotcha. So one of the biggest, uh, as far as me being an MMA journalist, one of the biggest things to happen over these past, you know, 10, 11 years was when Strike Force merged with UFC. Obviously, that was a big moment in your career and several other fighters. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, that further cemented UFC's reign as number one. With what you see in the modern landscape of mixed martial arts, you got, you know, PFL, which is making big moves, especially with the Francis Ngannou signing. Um, do you think that PFL, Bellator, especially if they would ever partner, would be able to kind of make a run, like kind, kind of give a, a run for UFC's money there? Uh, I don't know about, I don't know about that. Uh, but I definitely think it's good that they exist. Uh, like you said, PFL, Bellator, one championship and, and any other organization that's up and coming that, that could make it to that level. I think it's good for the fighters to have uh, options. It's, uh, you know, yeah, it takes away the monopoly of the UFC. And, um, y you know, I don't know that necessarily someone like PFL and Bellator joining together would, would be good or bad. I think it, it might just end up being like two monopolies, you know, basically. But if you, I think the more you have, the better, especially if they're all, uh, able to pay well. I hear you. I, I feel like, you know, before the Francis Ngannou signing the PFL, I feel like the biggest uh, change that we've seen in recent times would be like Demetrius Johnson, and Ben Askren being traded, but this Ngannou, like having a reigning undisputed heavyweight champion voluntarily just going to a different organization. I feel like that's going to do pretty big things for the sport. For sure. I think that's, uh, it's good that they did that. And, uh, it kind of uh, sets the precedence for other guys to do it as well. So, yeah, I, I agree. So you fought in 2021 uh, twice after a four-year hiatus from the sport. Uh, are you officially retired? Are you looking at the opportunity of competing again? Uh, what's kind of going through your mind there? Well, so I, I like you said, fought 2021, I fought two fights. That was uh, after a four-year retirement. And last year I had, I think four or five fight offers and I accepted, I accepted them all, but they all fell through. So I'm kind of in a place now, um, or sorry, that was, uh, in 20, was that? Yeah. Last year. So, uh, but also last year I did, uh, I did a uh, combat jujitsu. I did two matches and that was fun. And, um, but yeah, this year I'm kind of, th this might be my last year of being open to taking a fight at this point. So, or, or even considering, I should say. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, I I'm open at this point. I'm still in the gym. Uh, I'm still in shape, uh, but I'm not like training for a specific fight at this point. Why is uh, this the last year? Is it just like, you know, if something happens, it happens. If not, you're just ready to move on. Well, you know, I, it's a, it's a long story to be honest. And it just has to do with uh, my journey with, with the Lord, with God. And, uh, you know, I had a vision back in 2013 when I got saved and I saw a belt. And then 2018, after I retired, I had a dream and, and then a, like less than a week later, three people told me what was in my dream, essentially. And, uh, and so uh, 
like I'm kind of in a place where like, okay, well, um, if God wants me to still fight, he's going to have to make it happen. And, you know, regardless, I'm, I'm not really pursuing, you know, I'm not actively trying to get a fight at this point. Uh, I'm open to it, but, um, because last year, like I was more actively trying to get one the year before, same thing. And it's just, you know, it wasn't what I expected. So like I said, if something comes at this point, I'll take it. And, but regardless, I'm really, really pursuing, uh, ministry. And when I say that, I mean, ministry through mixed martial arts. So I'm, I'm still going to be involved in mixed martial arts. Uh, and I'm open to whatever God is going to lead me to do, uh, whether it's open a gym or, uh, you know, do missions through mix, mixed martial arts or, or whatever it is. You said it wasn't what you uh, expected. Uh, elaborate on that. Well, it's just like, um, you know, the the organizations that, that gave me offers, like I said, well, I mean, last year, I think four or five of the fights fell through. Um, and, you know, that's just, I mean, I, I know if, if God wants me to fight, I'll end up fighting. Uh, and that's the bottom line. So if he wants me to fight, I'll fight. And if not, it doesn't really matter to me because I'm my, you know, my heart is to do ministry to serve Jesus. Well, talking about that, you are the president uh, and founder of uh, Exodus Global Ministries. Uh, talk a little bit about that. What are your goals with that? Well, so, yeah, I, I started a nonprofit under my mentor's uh, nonprofit. He has an, a nonprofit called Ethne Global Services. So Exodus Global Ministries is, is like a, um, a subcategory of that of his nonprofit. And um I, I went on a mission trip in, I think it was, what year was it, 20, 2021 to Pakistan. And I saw, a, a, you know, a great need there and started working with some of the guys there to fund ministry and fun, uh, open basically schools, Christian schools there for these people that, that are literally enslaved, making bricks, they're, they're indentured servants and there's really no way for them to get out of debt. Uh, and the problem is the next generation under them, their children are working, making these like mud bricks every day. It's six, some of them seven days a week. And so I, uh, you know, we talked about it in a uh, school, you know, education for them would be the way out for the next generation of that poverty cycle. <clears throat> uh, so we started uh, to, and we were working on a third school. Um, but, you know, there were a lot of complications in, with, with the guys I was working with and some red flags. So I, um, right now I'm actually not working with, with those guys. Uh, and, but back in 2009, I, you know, I went on a mission trip to, to Turkey to give Bibles to Iranian tourists and also to work with the Iranian refugees that were living there. And so we've done a lot of work with the, the refugees, continued work. And uh, so, I mean, I'm using the, right now I'm using Exodus Global Ministries to fund some of the, the work that I do with the, with the refugees in Turkey. Yeah, so, I mean, it's essentially, it's just what, whatever, whatever uh, ministry I'm involved in, I'm going to use that to fund. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, Nate. I really appreciate the time. Uh, keep up the great work. Uh, and I will look forward to uh, staying in touch with you and seeing if, you know, possibly uh, you step in the cage again. I'm going to leave the floor to you. Any last words, anyone you'd like to thank, any shout outs, anything like that? Yeah, thanks a lot, Matthew. It's nice talking to you. And uh, congrats on all your success. That's pretty cool. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I do have something to pr promote, actually. On Sunday, I'm releasing a podcast called Fighting for Truth. Um, basically, it's a, you know, I'm getting a doctorate right now, and that was part of my project was leading a, a podcast. So that's the first episode, and you should check it out. Fighting for Truth with Nate Marquardt. Where can people find that? Uh, basically, all the platforms.
you know, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, I, I'm going to put it up on YouTube as well.